evening. Praise the name of the Lord. I come to us this morning in the name of, this evening, in the name of Jesus Christ. I hope you had a wonderful day somewhere today. Uh, you've worshipped the Lord wherever you went to church. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. That is the name of our God. He is greatly to be praised. I'm so happy to come to us tonight with an extraordinary program on tracing the mantles. This is going to be a little uh, special, uh, more than the others that we have done, in the sense that it's going to be different. Like you can see, I'm facing direct. That means I don't have a guest with me seated right now in studio. But I have a guest, and you're going to meet her in a short while. Yes, call your friends as usual and let them know that Tracing the Mantles program is on. I believe you're going, your eyes are going to be opened. I believe that the Lord is going to speak to you. I believe that the Lord is going to bring an impartation to each one of us as we listen to the guest that we have here tonight. Call your friends and tell them that we are on on a very extraordinary program tonight. I'm your host, Asunta Juma, as always, and it's always my joy to come to us. We just finished a very interesting um, conference that has been going on in the city, the Open, open, open Heavens Fire Conference, talking about the supernatural. It was at Nyayo Stadium. I hope you attended. I hope you attended. You met um, uh, the prophetess, um, Sid Jacobs. You met the prophetess of Apostle Fra uh, Francina Norman. You met Robert Kayanja, our brother and friend, Apostle Julia Subi, and his wife, Mother, were hosting that program in Nairobi Gathered. And I think it was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful program just to see people come all over the place and, you know, from all over the place and gather. And I believe that Kenya will no longer be the same again. I can testify that there was the presence of God there. And we've been praying and just looking up to the Lord and asking him that that conference will not leave this city the same. We believe something has happened in the heavenlies. One of the words I've kept hearing is the word reset. There is a reset that is going on in this country. Somehow I believe that with all my heart. And we want a new Kenya. We want God to reset this country. Hallelujah. And so um, in preparation for that reset, you know reset like you, you reset a, a watch, like you reset a watch, if a watch, you know, uh, the, uh, was not showing the right time, you know, you go ahead and put manjira on it, so just to reset it, oh yes, there is that word that has come forth, that this nation is being reset. What a wonderful time to be living in Kenya, in the time when the prophets are saying that it is the time for a reset. Wow. Blessed is the name of the Lord. And so um, we, we were privileged to host on Elevate TV the prophetess C.D. Jacobs. That is the guest that is going to be speaking to us tonight. And uh, so after a short while, um, we will just usher her in and then I will come back and make some level of commentary, you know, just uh, engage us, yes, just engage us together, praise the name of the Lord, in what she will have said. She's going to be giving a prophetic word, a very serious prophetic word. Those of you that were there in the conference, you heard that prophetic word, and a, a bit of the prophetic words, but this again is a program that she's going to speak even a little more. You don't want to miss this. You want to call your friends. I believe that surely this conference that has gone on in the city, I believe that the Lord has, you know, is affecting the spiritual environment of our territory. Our territory cannot be the same again. 
somebody said, if you want to know the kind of a building that is coming up in a particular place, look at the machinery that is, you know, has arrived, has been driven into the, into the, into the building area, into the building spot. And wow, what machinery we have heard in the spirit this time. We've had very major gifts. Those of you that do not know, C.D. Jacobs is an international prophet. She is an international prophet. And just hosting her is wonderful. You know, just hosting her, we expect that something is going to happen. She cannot go back. She has been a prophet to nations. And many times when she has, you know, entered nations and territories, God has used her to change those nations and those territories. And we expect the same. Also, why I really uh, believe that you should come on and just engage with this program is the fact that when Elizabeth met Mary or when Mary became pregnant, the Bible says she was sent by the Lord to Elizabeth. Elizabeth was six months pregnant. Mary had just gotten pregnant and she went to look for her and when they met the baby the bible says within the two women the babies started to communicate i believe with all my heart that this is a, a moment that you know those that are prophetic those that are those that desire to learn more about prophetics this is a moment for a divine impartation for a divine impartation. So expect a divine impartation, you know, expect to learn, expect an overshandling by the Holy Spirit, expect an impartation, an overshandling, yes, of the grace that is carried by our guest tonight. You don't want to miss this, call your friends, tell them we are on in a program here where you know, something awesome, something wonderful is going to happen. It's going to happen. Yes, Mount Kenya people, there's something in here for you. At the end, he's going to give a prophetic word, like I've already said, for this nation. You don't want to miss that. And I think it has implications. It has implications for the future. It has implications for you. God never speaks in vain. And he is not going to speak here in vain tonight. Kenya will never, 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 never be the same again. As for me, I was so, so blessed just to sit down there, you know, and just, you know, uh, listen to her and just get that impartation. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. That great impartation coming through. And I was so blessed. I was pale bowed. The Holy Spirit was there. There was such a move of God. Just like there's been a move of God in the conference that our, our brother Apostle Subi just hosted together with the church leaders of this nation. I just want us to go into the program right now. And I just want to invite you for this wonderful session. Yes, I'll be interviewing her. And I want you to write to us. Let's fellowship together. I'll be coming back after a short while, and God is going to bless us. Welcome, all of you, and let us yield to the Lord as he speaks to us through his servants. God bless you. Let's go to the program. God bless you, wherever you are tuned in to Elevate TV. We are so happy to have you. It is a wonderful day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are so blessed. Kenya is blessed. Nairobi is blessed. To host someone I'm just about to introduce to you. She is a God's general. She is an international prophetess. You got it. Prophetess Kenya. Prophetess. We give God the glory. I believe all the prophets now in this country have such an opportunity for a great divine impartation. And we are so happy as Elevate TV to come to us and we are so glad that she agreed to come as for me i'm just here in the lord hoping and waiting as i handle the grace of god i want to welcome to us 
prophetess C.D. Jacob. Thank you. So good to be here in Kenya. Yes. We're having a wonderful time. You are an international prophet carrying the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to the nations as a prophetess. What does it take to become an international prophetess? You could say character yeah. for one, really having good character. Mm -hmm. uh, the training is rigorous, you know, because <laughs> if you're going to speak for the Lord, you have to make sure that you have a pure heart. And um, I first prophesied when I was four years old. Oh my God, <laughs> oh my God. And uh, my, my dad was a pastor, wow. Baptist pastor. And I remember going to my mother and telling her, I'm gonna have a little baby sister. And she goes, no, we're not having any more children. You're mm -hmm. the last one. Mm -hmm. But she was pregnant with my little sister and she didn't know. Wow. And I remember it distinctly. My husband always teases me that sometimes I'll say, you were sitting on the second row and this is what you were wearing and you were on the left side. And you know, it's like, it's like I pull a file out of my brain, you know, and it, there will come, you know, not every time, but you know, sometimes that'll happen. One thing that I have done is always try to grow the gift. Wow, wow. In other words, I was never content with the level I was prophesying. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, you can kind of play it safe and you're real mm -hmm. general when you're prophesying mm -hmm. over people. Mm -hmm. But in a way, it takes a risk to mm -hmm. leap out there and say unusual things, mm. you know. Growing the gift, mm -hmm. that's so interesting, that's so amazing. Mm -hmm. What does it take to grow the gift? Well, of course it takes prayer. Yeah. You have to be right with God. But I'm a prophet to nations. And so it occurred to me that many times when I was going to nations, I wasn't asking to speak with the president or the prime minister. And I thought, well, I'm a prophet to nations, I should do that. So I began to do that. Mm. And I began to meet with the presidents and the prime ministers or whoever. Not everyone's gonna be a prophet to a president, but presidents need prophets. And uh, uh, also to call them to be a prophet. You remember that Samuel prayed and, and anointed David. True. And uh, one time I was in a stadium in Costa Rica I was leaving the stadium and a man was sitting in a wheelchair. He was very crippled. And I walked past him and the Lord said, go tell him he'll be the next president of Costa Rica. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't have faith. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> wow. Because he was paralyzed. Yeah. And so, but the Lord again nudged me and I went, I said, you're to run for president. You're going to be the next president of Costa Rica. You're going to expose great corruption. Oh my. And some other things. Well, he did, and he became the president. Praise the Lord. And then I was able to, you know, like uh, prophesy, make a treaty with all the presidents of Central America, fix the price of your fruit. Uh, you've been warring with the next nation over, uh, over the river between you, make peace with the president. Wow. He did all wow. those things. Wow, mm -hmm. amazing. So the Lord was basically creating an opportunity mm -hmm. through the prophetic gift mm -hmm. so that now the Lord would use you mm -hmm. to affect the region. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. Mm -hmm. We give God the glory for mm -hmm. that. You said something before we move on to the next point. You said that the training is rigorous. Mm -hmm. Please mm -hmm. say something about that. Mm -hmm. You can't be jealous. Uh -uh. You can't be easily offended. Oh my God. When you have uh, something from the Lord, it's, it's not always a popular message, mm -hmm. but your job is to hear from the Holy Spirit the way to say it that will evangelize the heart of the people to hear it. Mm -hmm. In other words, sometimes you could say something just straight. You would be saying the same thing. It would be truth but their hearts would be closed to it. <laughs> and so uh, I think it was uh, one, uh, Charles uh, Finney, a great evangelist, who said, the word that falls in an unprepared heart only hardens it. Oh. In other words, when you hear from the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you know, give it in a redemptive way that's still corrective. Uh, for instance, my husband and I were standing in front of a young woman, and I knew she was in sexual sin. Mm -hmm. And so 
My husband was saying, thinking, well, she just needs to be corrected. Mm -hmm. But I prophesied about her life, mm -hmm. about what God wanted. Oh my God. And then I leaned over and I said, now you don't want to be doing that anymore, what oh. you're doing. You oh know you're God. sinning. She yeah. started crying. Mm. You see, I prophesied to the wilderness in her heart. She knew she was yeah. in sin. Yeah. I didn't have to tell her. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit needed to convict her. Mm -hmm. And so you can learn to be skillful and an adept at your gift. Yes. I'm thinking about um, um, the fact that many times we come from the loins of other people. Mm -hmm. What loins did you come from? Well, you know, really, I was prophesying for some time and didn't even know oh, other prophets amazing, at all. Amazing. And you have to understand that. Uh, 40 something years ago, there weren't many prophets. True, true. I mean, certainly people were prophesying, but we didn't know about them, mm -hmm. you know, and we didn't know each other. Mm -hmm. And now there's many networks of prophets and mm -hmm. things like that. And uh, certainly as a woman, I didn't know another woman preacher mm -hmm. when I started preaching, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you don't prophesy to a president by bringing your shofar into the room and no. blowing it and no. marching no. around, no. you know? Yes. They have protocol officers. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I have learned through the years that, that I listen to their protocol and I honor their protocol. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, uh, Amazing. It, that's very intriguing that you didn't learn the prophetics from someone else. Mm -hmm. The Lord just started walking with you mm -hmm. from four years. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very encouraging for someone who feels like I got no one, I got no one to look to. Like Mary, they are saying, I have no man. Even if you have no man, <laughs> you got an example <laughs> of a prophetess that has grown and didn't have a man. <laughs> Except maybe, and, and talking about having, having men, having other human beings, mm -hmm. What are some of the networks, apostolic prophetic networks that you are working with? Well, 23 years ago, almost 24 now, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I went to my mentor, Dr. Peter Wagner, and said, let's gather some prophets together. Mm -hmm. He really didn't know the prophets at that oh, point. Oh. And so I made a list and we started meeting yearly with prophets and we took the model from Antioch where it says that the prophets and teachers were in Antioch and the Holy Spirit said, set aside to me, mm. you know, Paul and Barnabas, every year we get a word that all of us agree on and then we issue that prophecy for the year. Mm -hmm. uh, this year we discussed World War III, or last year, we mm -hmm. met last mm -hmm. November. Mm -hmm. We're almost, we're gonna meet again in Dallas November. And we began to learn to work together. Some are seers, you know, mm. some have, some, some have greater discernment. Mm -hmm. Some understand, you know, more intercession. Mm. So, and then uh, in 2017, the Lord gave us a prophecy through James Gall that we should gather the prophets from the world. And so now we have about 60 nations that meet together every year to get the word of the Lord for, mm. for the whole world. I had a little glimpse of it and it, mm -hmm. it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. There's something you said that was very amazing right there. You said that there are many people that are prophesying, mm -hmm. if I got it correctly, mm -hmm. and there looks to be agreement mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. all these prophetic mm -hmm. words. Mm -hmm. And so you know that surely this is the word of mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. What an mm -hmm. amazing thing that we all can learn as nations mm -hmm. and as Christians from different territories. Mm -hmm. Talking about working with people, I'm thinking about unity, the unity of the prophets, the unity of the prophetic and different kind of ministers, the unity of the church. Mm -hmm. Where there isn't this opportunity for this unity for whatever reason, Mm -hmm. What are people missing? Unity is built around relationships. Mm -hmm. And as I began to build these networks of leaders, we have about 300 we meet with of prophets. It's like herding cats getting prophets together. You mm -hmm. know, this one is here and this mm -hmm. one, where'd they go? Oh, they're mm -hmm. out there in the hall prophesying over yes, someone, yes, you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, um, I think we have really grown to love each other. Wow, wow, amazing. And and when you love each other, you overlook mm. some, you know, stylistic mm. things. Mm. And uh, 
I pulled, was able to pull a, a broad range of different prophetic streams mm -hmm. and different peoples, mm -hmm. and now they're listening to each other. You have to be intentional about it. Amazing. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you have to set aside a time where where you do this, mm -hmm. and uh, and and it pays off to do that. Mm -hmm. And before the prophets come, they each have to send in a prophetic word. And I'm tough on them, you know, like uh, some prophets use so much typology. Like I remember one of them said, Argentina is a beautiful purple flower. And I was like, what does that mean? Okay, we're a flower. But how is that going to advance the nation? Mm. You know, and uh, so I'm, I'm tough on them. I mean, I'll say, is this the end times? If it is, you know, uh, is the war going to come? Is this the war to end all wars? Mm -hmm. I mean, I ask him really hard questions, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I challenge them mm -hmm. to grow in their gift also. Mm -hmm. That kind of unity that you have works very well to help one another. Oh, yes. And to open up nations. Oh, yes. And I think that um, when nations don't have that opportunity for that oneness and for that unity, then we are missing a lot. Yes, that, that's really true. Mm -hmm. Now we have councils for all of Europe, prophet mm -hmm. councils, wow. all of Australia, New Zealand, Canada. Uh, so there are many nations that now, you know, Amsterdam, I mean, Holland, that have gathered together. We've met with uh, prophets from all of Central America, wow. South America now. And uh, so we're finding uh, there isn't the fighting, you know, there yeah, isn't yeah. the rubbing. Yeah. And uh, one thing in our prophetic council we've agreed to is if we hear bad things said about one another, we'll share it with each other wow. so we can get it corrected somehow. Wow. Wow. And the other thing, you know, so we're in covenant. Wow. Wow. We're in a covenant relationship mm. with one another. Mm. And then if someone gets a strong word, for instance, a lot of prophecies were coming. The California was going to fall into the ocean. There was going to be a meteor that hit it, and there would be no more California. Yeah. And Las Vegas, Nevada would be oceanfront footage, you know. <laughs> and, well, you know, we felt like God was warning because he did not want that to happen. Mm -hmm. And the people in California were all mad that everybody were happy they were going to fall <laughs> into the ocean, you know. So we sent prayer teams because yeah. we not only prophesy, we pray. Oh, amen. And right now, some of our teams have been going on a regular basis to uh, Taiwan, you know, because we also have a 50-state prayer network, the mm -hmm. generals. Mm -hmm. And so we bring together the prophecy and intercession. Amen. Uh, if God warns, mm -hmm. he wouldn't warn if he wanted it to just true, happen. True, true. You know, he's a merciful he's God. He's a wonderful God. And so we've been doing a lot of prayer to stop World War III right now. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we've sent prayer teams to the Economic Forums, Davos, mm -hmm. uh, the World Health Organization. We've been praying for wisdom, praying over major economic policies. We just prayed at every bank in the United States to try to work to stabilize the economy. We're in a That's great huge. reset. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Kenya's in a great reset right mm -hmm. now. True, true. You know, and uh, so, but what way is it going to be set? Mm -hmm. and who is going to, who is going to reset it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and how will it be done? Will it be righteously? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. I hope you are enjoying this and I hope you're hearing great things here tonight. I can see some of you are on and I just want to acknowledge you for joining us here. Yes, Jackie Nyambura, Toshe, you say that we are sure we will be blessed because you are the best. You're basically saying Elevate TV is the best. You say we love Elevate TV. Oh, it's wonderful to be loved. And love is of God. Yes, and you're sharing with us your appreciation of what we do. And listen, Jackie, we do it for the Lord. And we are so happy that you are able to appreciate and to see that. Thank you for being tuned in tonight. That is on Facebook. Uh, Isaac Gogi, Karibu Sana, you are welcome. I'm so glad you're tuned in. Yes, Othiambu Wauma, yes, I can see you. Dida Frederick, thank you. Ruseka Terry, Joe Mwangangi, yes, Mwangi Dan. Oh, somebody is tuned in from Addis Ababa. Oh my God, that's far. 
far north, how is the north? This is Mwangi, how is Addis? Oh yes, God bless you so much when we pass through there. We shall come by and greet you. I hope you're serving God there and sh shining forth the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So nice to have you. I hope you have been blessed. Timothy Kasioki, you are saying hallelujah. Yes, I also say with you hallelujah. Julia Karibu Sana, yes, tuned in. It's very inspiring. Yes, glory to God. I hope you are getting encouraged and there is an impartation that is coming your way. Philip Orwa, Karibu Sana, nice to see you tonight in Jesus' name. And Lillian Jerry, yes, God bless you. I'll be talking to many of you later alone, but let me see who is on YouTube. Let me see who is on YouTube. We are happy, so happy, happy, happy. Oh my God, this is starting to misbehave. Um, yes, it's come back. Ooh, yes, hallelujah. Hmm, we are learning. We are learning these things. See, see, Karibu Sana, Rachel. Oh, yes, hallelujah. Washuka, you're welcome. See, see, you say, wow. It says, if you hear from the Holy Spirit, give it a redem in a redemptive way. Wow, you are learning. Uh, Reverend Kanani, thank you. I can see you are there, Alex Mwangi. Sarah Muni, oh yes, you are, um, you are tuned in. I pray that this is working good for you. Susan Mudamia, great conversation. Oh, Sue, nice to see you. Victor Karibu Sana. Oh, Pastor Karen. <laughs> I can see you, Rusi Duberi. Oh, Mukowengi, Mukowengi, we are many in the house. And I'll be mentioning some of your names as we continue. Oh, somebody is tuned from Scotland. Oh, my God. I hope it's no longer winter, whatever the case may be. But I'm so glad you're here and you have been blessed. Peacemakers Foundation. God bless you. I'll be talking and reading your comments as time goes by. Hallelujah. Just before we go back to the other segment of this encouragement with Sissy, I mean, no, with the prophetess, uh, C.D. Jacobs. And you know, you know, it was such an honor for me just to sit there and we are able to bring her to you. It's wonderful. Please note that she says that if you're going to grow in the prophetic, you cannot be jealous of others. You cannot be easily offended. They are the enemies of the prophetic and the prophet. And I think so many people have been offended and they have left their place because of offense. Many great voices have been silenced in this nation because of offense. You feel so offended you become so in trouble, you can't even put your hand up, you can't put your finger up because of offense. Jesus said offenses must come. Oh, to the one uh, through whom offenses come. So basically saying, you take care, you take care, you take care of yourself. Jesus has taken care of the offender. Oh, Jesus Christ will take care of the offender. What you need to do is take care like Jesus Christ was the greatest person to be offended. He was offended greatly. Oh my God. But he continued to the end until he fulfilled his divine mandate. Many people are stopped. Don't be stopped by offense. Don't become competitive and strivious. Don't become jealous. All those enemies of the prophets, uh, Prophet Sid talked about them so, so much. And I believe that we are learning something. We're going to go on to another segment where now things will become very hot. Oh, yes. And remember, I long for an impartation for you that the prophet in you would be stand up in the name of Jesus because we need you in the kingdom. Let's go on to the other segment of this program. Then I will be back to close. Don't go away. Call your friends. Tell them now it's getting, it's getting hot in here. Oh, yes. And you have a part in what is going to be said here. God bless you. See you in a bit.
man of God must remain focused in the ministry. A pastor needs prayer, care, love, and encouragement. You have to have a mentor, someone you can be able to obey, to love, to submit to. What is pastors and leaders should do to create the right country? The most powerful thing a pastor can do to his people is teach them. Being accountable to an authority is not weakness, yes. it's strength. On Encourage a Pastor, we share real and authentic conversations that intend to give solutions to a pastor. If there's a minister out there, there are character issues, don't push. Don't keep on ministering. You will be fruitful. In the body of Christ, certain wives have given up because probably they feel they haven't gotten the right leadership from their own husbands. We need to learn to know our husbands after the Spirit. I'm telling you, don't quit. Catch and encourage a pastor every Saturday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Wow, praise the Lord. My name is Apostle David Juma. Listen, this Elevate TV, all the programs, all the sessions we bring live or even pre-recorded are always geared to advance kingdom lifestyle. And you too can be part of the kingdom. Listen to me. Jesus loves you so much and so do I. And I want you to be part of the kingdom. And many times you say, oh, I wish this man and women of God can pray for me. Today is the day I want to make an urge and a call to you. If you've been listening in and enjoying God's word day in, day out, listen. Jesus Christ want to save you, to forgive you, to wash you with his blood and make you part of the kingdom and make you a child of God and have a relationship with you. We offer you somebody called Jesus, not religion, not do's and don'ts. Well, those can come in after your discipled. But first and foremost, the most important thing is to receive Jesus in your soul. And how can you do that? Recognizing your sinner, you can't help yourself. Number two, recognize that God did it for you on the cross. Recognize that uh, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so I want to pray with you right now. Glory to God. Let me pray with you to receive Jesus. Why not? Right now. Right here. Yes. You can pray this prayer with me. I did that 40 something years ago and Jesus has been Lord and God over my life. Changed me, transformed me, made me what I am because of Jesus in my soul. You too can be part of the kingdom. Pray with me this prayer. Say, dear Jesus, today I open my heart. I want to follow you today. I believe you are the son of God and I believe you died on the cross. You are buried and three days, then you rose from the dead. I believe today you are life. So Jesus, I pray, come into my heart and change me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, glory to God. What a joy to just make such a powerful prayer and asking Jesus to come into your soul. I have this booklet that I always use and want to send this booklet to you. It's called New Believer, Now That You're Saved. And it will summarize for you a few basic things that are important for a new believer, like the assurance of salvation and the need for you to share your testimony, the need for you to have be in fellowship with God's people, the need for you to be baptized in water to co completely change your life. The need for you to be in fellowship through God's word and how to read it and also how to pray. Glory to God. How to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. There are so many wonderful things. And so if you can send us a text on WhatsApp on the number 0719 we are going to send you this booklet to you uh, in form of uh, e-copy and it can edify you and build you. If you are able to access uh, or send a message you know, to our own bookshop here in uh, Elevation Bookshop, you can get the book. It's free, this one, for anybody who gives his life to Jesus. From Elevate TV, we are so excited that we can pray with you and lead you to Christ and let you know that heaven needs you, God needs you, and while you are still on the earth, after receiving Christ, serve him with all your heart, love him and worship him and be a supporter of the kingdom of God. And I tell you what, your life will not be wasted and that of your family. We love you and God bless you. Thank you for receiving Jesus once again. Now that you are saved, you are a new believer. Welcome to the kingdom of God. And I love you so much. God bless you.
reading is a gateway to knowledge and wisdom. It allows us to learn from the experiences of others and to be inspired by their stories. At Elevation Bookshop, we have a wide selection of books on a variety of topics, including leadership, purpose, marriage, finance, and more. Visit us today at Kenya Cinema Plaza along Moy Avenue or call us on 0748-902-225 or visit our Facebook, Instagram and Twitter pages at Elevation Bookshop to place your order. We deliver orders countrywide. Elevation Bookshop and reach your life. What affects the spiritual climates of different territories? For example, nations, let's say nations or communities. Well, it's very interesting. I was preaching in uh, Pastor Trace's church, FEM, mm. and uh, mm. the Lord really has helped me identify a strong man over the mm. nation. Mm. Mm. It's the spirit of offense. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And it's like, you know, someone says just a little thing and mm. you're just, it escalates. Everyone's mad about this. Oh my God. You know, uh, or, and, and with offense comes jealousy, comes contention, you know, fighting among the brethren. And uh, of course there's tribal offense that mm. can come, mm -hmm. generational offense, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know, we need to be unoffendable. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit has really been working in my heart for that. I didn't realize, you know, I was thinking about, you know, I'm, Mike and I have been married 50 years this year and we're doing a big re-wedding. I have a wedding gown. Yeah, August 19th, we're having this whole ceremony. But, you know, I was thinking daily, like, okay, am I, am I, either offended or am I being offensive? Like, don't wear that, you know, that doesn't look good, you know, or go back and change. You know, we women can tell our husband that, nah, that doesn't look good, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I'm just trying to work on my personal character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you know, you have to go through the car wash first. You know, the first one into the fire, mm -hmm. you know, like the fiery furnace, the first one out. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always trying to work hard to be a better believer in Jesus Christ. The basics. Oh, Do oh I my love God. my enemies? Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes I don't love my enemies, <laughs> you know, and I don't even want to think about loving my oh, enemies, no, you know. No. You know, I want to whine to the Lord and say, oh, but you don't know what they did to Do me. You? They're yes, so mean. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, you know, do I want you to call fire down from heaven on them? Yes, I do. You know? Yes, yes. <laughs> Bind them up. Mm. Oh, I have to really get my heart right. Mm. So basically you are saying it is a matter of uncircumcised hearts. Mm -hmm. People are lying offenses mm -hmm. when people allow you know, uh, competition, strides, mm -hmm. jealousies, mm -hmm. maligning, mm -hmm. accusations. Mm -hmm. All those things bring mm -hmm. a gridlock in the spirit mm -hmm. against the people. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that from when we sat here, I think I can pick that thread coming along. From the very beginning, you, you keep saying, oh, the training is rigorous. You keep saying, it has got to do with your heart. Uh, the Lord changing this, the Lord changing this, do I love people? I mean, you know, it sounds so simplistic. <laughs> it's the gospel. But yes, yes. And that's exactly, exactly, that's what I wanted to say. It's the gospel. And that's what Christ wants us. Mm -hmm. How will a minister, therefore, be able to break through these things so that they can gain stature? in the spirit, the very stature of Christ, so that they can be able to minister in the prophetic. You know, I remember one time in my early days, people used to say, I was just like a wild faith looking for a place to happen. I was like, I'll do it, you know, yes. I'll make it happen. Mm. And God began to show me the roughness of my character and the way I would even talk to people. 
Mm. You know, and, and mm -hmm. sometimes prophets think they have a right just to be mean. You know? <laughs> I believe. You know? and, uh, uh, and one day the Lord was saying to me, Cindy, I says, Lord, I feel like you're dealing with my flesh. Like you're pulling it off with tongs. And, mm -hmm. and then you find a little piece of me left. And you go, oh, here's a little piece. And you <laughs> throw it on the floor and take a hammer. Bam, bam, bam. You know, there's not going to be anything left. Oh, you know, Lord. Yes, we're going to have to yes, die to Lord. that, Cindy. You know, yes, Lord. you have to die to the opinions of yes. man. Oh, Lord. Mm. You know, if you're going to say what the Lord says, mm. and especially, um, like where we are, the secular press, mm -hmm. you know, um, we, I've had newspapers put pictures of our headquarters, front page, you know, mm -hmm. with the address and mm -hmm. people call my staff cursing them mm -hmm. while calling one line after the other, you know, day after day cursing and, and, uh, you know, so you have to really grow in the nature of Christ. Or you get yes. bitter, or you get angry, mm. you know, and an angry prophet is a bad prophet. Mm. An angry prophetess is a very bad prophet. <laughs> Amazing. What is the Lord saying to this nation? Well, this nation is in a great reset. Mm -hmm. mm. And the various prophecies the Lord has given me through the years that the Kenyan shilling would be the top currency. I watched that. Yeah, mm. in Africa. And I felt like the, the crippled, you know, the crippled man you prophesied mm -hmm. that the person will become a president. Mm -hmm. When you, I watched that and when mm -hmm. you said that, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I felt like that man. I said, oh, can I crippled? Mm -hmm. Will we really become mm -hmm. the, the, the first, you know, the best mm -hmm. currency? Mm -hmm. But you mm -hmm. said that the crippled man mm -hmm. became president. Mm -hmm. So we believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Yes. Well, you have to add your faith to it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the Bible says the word didn't prosper them, mm. you know, because they didn't have faith. True. And so many times it's not the fault of the prophet. And then you ha there's a second dimension of prophecy. You have to work the word. You have to work the word. Yes. What you, is that in heaven? Well, you have to pray and mm -hmm. you have to see that people put feet to the prayers. We need to have informed intercession. Mm. And we need to understand how to pray. Or we just pray the same routine things over, but we're not advancing the kingdom and the nation mm -hmm. because we're ignorant. We, we don't understand anything about economy. Mm -hmm. I mean, our prayer generals, they understand what's happening economically in our nation, in the world. We have economists speak to them. We have the best economists. They are trained. They can explain to you you know, what's happening at the banking systems, you know, but they they didn't know all of that. Mm -hmm. But it's my job mm -hmm. to train mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. so that they will be able to pray the word. So there is a whole realm and dimension of training. Yes. Training prophetic intercessors. Yes. So that they can be able to pick the prophetic words yes. and work them out. Yes. Amazing. Well, and then another prophetic word that God gave me for Kenya was God would put the taste of Kenya coffee in the mouth of the world. You know, I grew up picking coffee <laughs> in my father's <laughs> little oh, farm. Oh, you did. Jumping with those those um, they're usually interesting plants. So you you get a hold of it, and you are a little young. So you have to pull it because it's it's tall. Oh. Then it, it overpowers you. So it it goes up with you. <laughs> <laughs> so God is going to put the taste of mm -hmm. Kenyan coffee. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yes. And so yesterday we went to a coffee farm, and high in the hills. And we were speaking to the county officers, and they are working very hard uh, uh, with this current government and to help the farmers learn new ways to farm. And they're working with the next generation, the Rutos, you know, the family. They're working hard, and, and, and their daughter, Charlene, she's working hard. Mm, praise and, God. Yeah, and mm. so the thing is, if you hear the word, mm. you have to not only be a hearer, but a doer. And so uh, I loved it how uh, the government leaders were talking about, uh, we want to improve, we want to give 
the Farmer's Better Fertilizer. We want to help the farmers understand new ways to farm. So as they're doing that, God is fulfilling a prophecy. Mm. God mm. is doing something. The young people were leaving the farms, but there's not a legacy piece there. Mm. So what about training young people on how to be good farmers? That's so amazing. And so they love the land. People, you know, you, you Kenyans, you love your land. We do. I mean, there's oh, something do. specially, you're specially connected to the land itself. That's true. In a unique way, mm -hmm. you know. And you know, amazing prophetess, you know, uh, in the 80s and the 90s, some of us went to school, our parents were farmers, coffee farmers. So we went to school when they got, they sold their coffee, they got some money, they took us to school. But something went wrong someplace and everybody pulled down their coffee farms. So I the heard. Lord is basically saying that those who uprooted their coffee bushes should now go back. Mm -hmm. Those are the practicals. Exactly. My brother should hear that and my brothers, my <laughs> sisters, oh. everybody, Mount Kenya, everybody wear coffee. You, you uprooted coffee. <laughs> hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Yes. And, and find out new ways and be innovative. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. You Amazing. Know, I think a whole industry could be saved mm. if everyone believed this word. Amen. So there has to be believing, there has to be praying, and there has to be action that is taken. Yes, pray mm. and act. Mm. Pray and act. Amen. You know, God is bringing up not only revivalists, but reformers. Mm. We have to marry revival and reformation. You are saying we need to pray for reformers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're Amazing. supposed to love God with our heart, soul, and our mind. True. So we need to learn to think biblically. Amen. Amen. You can look at that camera as we go to finish this and speak your heart out to Kenya. Just speak your heart out as the Holy Spirit leads you. Yes. I want to say to you mm. that God has chosen you to be Kenyan. Amen. God has blessed you to be a Kenyan. And so, first of all, consider it an honor. Be proud to be a Kenyan. Wow. Because God and His redemptive purpose called you here. And secondly, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is going to show you what to do. What is the purpose of God in your generation? Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, if you will work and if you will believe, you're going to see that you will begin to prosper. And as you prosper, then you're going to be able to help fight poverty. Mm -hmm. And as you help fight poverty, you're going to see farmers that are struggling, people in different, the dairy, the, the agriculture, many different parts of the country. You're going to see it grow and change too. Mm -hmm. So the Lord says, this is a great reset for the great Kenya. This is a great reset and you're part of it. And listen, don't be discouraged. Right now you might say, I don't even know where to begin. I'm mm. gonna pray for you. Mm. Holy Spirit, I just thank you right mm. now mm. that you are showing people where to begin yes, for their Lord. reset, showing mm. people where to begin mm. to have a new time. This is a new season for you. It's yes, a new Lord. time for you. Yes, and Lord. God is fighting for you right alongside. Mm. As for me, I've been very, very privileged. I give God the glory. Wow. I'm with the prophetess, <laughs> C.D. Jacobs. Oh, oh my. my God. Oh I my. give you the glory, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Oh my. Glory to your holy name. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Come again when you pass around. Thank you. Let us know. Say, I want that lady who interviewed me with a green dress. <laughs> And let's do another one. Thank you. And when you go home, may God bless you and bless your ministry. By the way, come and do um, a prophetic council in Kenya and in Africa. Mm -hmm. I hope there's one. <laughs> if there isn't, welcome. <laughs> Thank and come you. so that we can be Thank trained. you. We'll pray into it that. It was wonderful having you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you so much. It was nice having you. I'm sure you've been blessed. Please listen to this over and over again. This is a great grace. And I believe there is great impartation as you continue to listen and to release your faith to the Lord and also humble 
yourself before God. Let's come together as a nation. Let the prophets come together. We can also raise international, you know, um, prophet. God bless you. Wow, amazing. <laughs> I'm sure you've been blessed. You've been blessed. This is wonderful. You are basically listening to some of the, one of the greatest prophets, you know, very, very adored people who are moving nations, people who are resetting nations by the word of God, by the grace of God and the divine mandate. Wow. And I believe a word has come even to this nation. Now you have something to go back to. You have something to work with. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, you have heard the voice of the Lord. Of course, let me go ahead and uh, continue to just uh, recognize several of you again. Lucy Dumberry, thank you very much. Nimo, yes, tuned in as we fellowship together. We have fellowship together. George Wanderi, God bless you. You know the challenges, you always want me to read your name, so I have to do it very quickly. Sambu Mashua, wow, amazing. Karibu, Caroline Goge, Pius, yes, Victor Wanyama, Tabitha, Meru. You are saying I'm learning a lot. Thanks for a beautiful session. Yes, what a beautiful session the Lord has given to us. Masi Masharia, you're on YouTube with us. God bless you. <laughs> Margaret Geshane says, Pia Mimi Niko tuned. Yes, 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 yes. And I can see you are tuned. John Amos, thank you. Manasseh, Spirit in Mugure. Oh my God, we are all in here and it is wonderful. Oh, Mr. Kibuchi, you are saying, Praise God for the opportunity to hear the woman of God. Look at what the Lord has done, giving us elevated TV so that we can bring these wonderful people to us and we, we are very blessed. Medeva says, take care of yourself. Jesus will take care of the offenders. Yes. Oh, Pastor Felix Kiambodhi. Wow, nice to see you. This is very impactful. Yes, I'm so happy. You are impacted. I can't read all, all of you, but let me take a few of you that have written a little bit more. Kyoko, you are saying learning. We have to die to the opinions of men, Aye. the enemies of the prophets. That prophet has had to die. No, I talked to her. I talked to her at the side. Oh my God, you want to be a prophet? Welcome. But when you start now to move, she said, the training is rigorous. And let, I asked her at the center, I said, oh, what is it to be rigorous? What is it? She said that, you know, the Lord has to deal with your flesh, with your carnal nature, so that you can carry his love, so that you can be able to carry his word. Yes, the vessel, the conveying mas machine for the word of God is mercy, love, and grace. Isn't that wonderful? May God help us. You know, all these things that, you know, Christians are wrestling and struggling with, you know, self-promotion, all these many things are keeping us, you know, all this competition, all this strife, all these accusations, all this, you know, you know, push and pull and all that, pulling down one another. That is why we, our, our prophetics, our prophetic ministry is not growing. The Lord wants to mature our prophetic ministry. Mm. And she do says, uh, and Jamrik watching from Tanzania, my loving and, oh, uh, okay. God have mercy, oh, from Tanzania. Tanzania, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Yes, all the way from that wonderful country. We are happy that you are doing well. Yes, Pastor Philly says, training prophets is very key. This is amazing. I can't finish. I cannot finish what you are saying. Now, one of the things that I've learned so, so much is that she says, once the word is spoken, once the word of the Lord comes forth, you got to work the word. You got to work the word. So the word has to be worked. And I asked her, how do you work the word? She says, by prayer. So there's to be a lot of prayer that must be put in the word, meaning it is not obvious 
The fact that you received a word from God, it is not obvious that it is going to be fulfilled. You've got to work it out by faith, by the word of God, and by prayer. Wow. Talking about communities of prophets, so that, you know, prophets can have accountability partners. She went into that, but didn't bring it so much. You know, it's not so strong in the program. But yes, they are very big. She told me they are very big in apostolic prophetic companies. People coming together from different nations, from different communities that carry the prophetic grace, you know, and they are all listening to the Lord together so that they, you know, um, provide bava, you know, they provide, you know, uh, protection, you know, like saying, I have your back, you have my back, that we will listen together, we'll test the word of God together. Wonderful. I believe that is going to happen in this country. I asked her in the program, I said, you have done prophetic councils and round tables all over the world. Why would you not do it in Kenya and in Africa? When you hear it, if this is your gift, put your ear on the ground. I'm sure there will be some direction on that. It is time for the prophetics to grow, for prophets to come forth. So finally, coffee, 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 coffee. Oh my God, coffee, Ooh, Kenyan coffee. That God is going to put the taste of Kenyan coffee all over the world. Oh my God, how many farms in the, in the mostly in the, in the 90s, mid 90s and late 90s, people really uprooted those bushes and I know people who did that. I think I come from that region where we literally uprooted those things and made firewood. Listen, it is time for a reset. Let us go back. I, I, I mean, I think the prophet is saying, if you have land, go look for land and, you know, plant coffee. That's the way to obey the word of God. That's the way to obey the word. You got to do something about it. You've got to do something about it. Yes. Go and lease land for about 20 years or 30 years and uh, pay it up and plant coffee. Because the Lord, the message from heaven says that coffee is coming back as the black gold, the black gold in the economy of our country. Wow. What about that? The Kenyan shilling. <laughs> it's going to be very strong. It's going to be extremely strong in Africa. And you heard my comment, did you? Did you not hear my comment? But you see, we speak those things that are not as though they are. It's a promise. The intercessors now and the prophets should wake up and speak it forth and war for it. Pray for the government. Pray for the president. Wow, amazing. Did you hear that the prophet of God met a crippled man on a chair and told him, the Lord told him, prophesy to this man because he is going to become the president of, I can't remember the nation, of course I think you do, of this nation. And she thought, no, but he's a cripple. He's a cripple, he can't be president. But the Lord insists and says, no, go and prophesy. To the man and she obeyed and that man became the president of that country. Wow, later on she had capacity now to influence the president to end trouble, war with the neighbors and all that and all that and make the country prosper. And as she was speaking, I was thinking about our nation. I was thinking about the place of the prophet. I noticed through the prophetic gift, corruption, the giant of corruption, this evil high tower and mountain of corruption can come down. It is possible for a prophet to arise in this land and by divine unction and instruction, cast the mountain of corruption and it will come down. Because I think that's one of the things that really, you know, we got to, we got to really, really arise and find out the divine strategy on how to, 
you know, handle corruption in this country. It's one of the greatest enemies we have in the land. But the Lord who raised his own, the Lord who raised his own seed, Jacobs, in this uh, country, it is you, it's someone else, and you'll be able to say corruption shall never be that tree or dry. And when you say it, it shall surely dry. And we go all the way into matters, you know, um, tribalism and all that and all that. Yes, so let's, let's press in. I think that's the word. Let's press in for these things. Let's allow the Lord to change our hearts. Let's not be easily offended. Mm. I thank God you don't know the person I'm talking about, but a person wrote to me a text this evening, told me she's in so much trouble. She says, early in the year, I was offended. Offense is a terrible thing. Let's not easily be offended. We lose so much. Let's forgive easily. Let's forgive both imaginary and real sins. Let's be the first to forgive. Let's bless people. Let's, let's just be good to people and love people the way the Lord loves us. That is where we will be able to prophesy. We'll be able to be, you know, a wineskin wherein the Lord now can speak through. We'll become the trumpet of the Lord because, the, the, you know, our lives are clear. The airwaves, the airways are clear. Wonderful. I believe with all my heart you have met up a real prophet giving real direction talking about real practical things not oh oh there's somebody there who is being no 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 oh god is touching this and this and that. that that's okay but this one is saying coffee this one is talking about the kenyan shelling kenyans let's not lose hope the lord has his eyes on us it shall be well in this country we believe we keep praying yes in jesus name and we have a sure word of prophecy, which we keep worrying for. We've got to go off tonight. Next Sunday, we've got another wonderful program for you. Thank you for staying with me tonight. I wish I could have read all your, your, your messages. I can see Jim. Jim Mogo, hi. You are in here. God bless you. Ah, yes, the reset moment is coming. It is now. Be reset as Kenya is being reset. Glory to God. God bless you. This is our great country. We are Kenyans. We have no apologies to make. God is going to take care of our borders. God is going to, you know, you know take care of us. God is going to intervene in this country. Many times I've heard people say, it's like we are bombarded from all over the world. Everybody has something to do with this country. The Lord is going to lift and take care of the boundaries of this country. Gatekeepers are going to arise of this country from different places and the economy will be taken care of and we, we will have our wonderful, great country. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Knoweth God. He that loves not, Knoweth not that God is love. Oh, yes. Let us love one another. Good night. We love you. Jesus loves you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Great grace, great peace. Have a peaceful night from us. It was nice having you. Take care of coffee and tea, I believe. Take care of your money. God bless you. See you next Sunday.